we are shifting away from animal foods. Now, for some people still in our society, even though this is gaining ahead and, and you know, we're learning more about why animal foods are not optimal for our health, for some people, it's still sort of a new topic and they're not perhaps fully aware of what is so bad. So can you give us a short summary? Let's start with dairy. What's really at the essence of the biggest problem when it comes to dairy? Well, uh, so dairy is the number one source of saturated fat in this country, which is the kind of the uh, number one mover, the number one risk factor for our number one killer, heart disease, so LDL cholesterol. And so, uh, you know, if we don't want to die from heart disease, number one killer both men and women, then we need to reduce our intake of saturated fat, cholesterol, and trans fats. And the number one source of saturated fat is dairy. And so killer number one, reason enough, um, and then one can go down the list and talk about the role of uh, DRA plays in uh, prostate cancer. And uh, just to you know, yesterday, yesterday's video on Nutrition Facts was this extraordinary research about cow's milk and childhood constipation, um, where they did this study where they took, you know, this series of kids coming in with um, serious constipation, laxatives didn't work, many of them had anal fissures and all sorts of inflammation and swelling. Um, took dairy out of the diet, and what percent of them were cured? A hundred percent of them were cured. Every single person. I mean, you rarely see that in kind of studies. Why didn't I learn about that in medical school? Well, you know, I mean, where do we get our information about the about dairy? We get it from the dairy industry, and so it's no surprise. Um, so that's really that's really what motivates me to do my work. Is that there's this tremendous body of science out there. But the only way it gets translated into something, some form that's accessible to people is if there's kind of commercial interests involved. We hear about the, the latest drug or the latest surgical procedure. Maybe see an ad on TV for some new drug. But you'll never see an ad on TV for broccoli right? because there's no, there's no, you know, you can't mark it up. There's no, there's no profit motive. You can't brand broccoli. So for that same reason, you won't see an ad on TV for broccoli. You won't hear about so amazing study about strawberries or, or broccoli or, you know, on down the list. So that I just said, well, someone's got to do it. And so that's what I've been doing for a few years. And uh, I'm so excited to be reaching so many people. Fantastic. And that's really one of the uh, big, big highlights. And I think such a strong part of your work and what you share via your writing and your videos is that you present the research. You really get right into the studies that many people perhaps won't be either interested in or won't understand or perhaps you know just won't have the means to access even some of the scientific literature. And that's what you get right into and really help people understand what is going on out there. So another fantastic video you have is actually about eggs. Give us a quick summary of why eggs are not this perfect protein source or you know addition to our diets. So I listed three things we want to reduce in our diet, saturated fat, dietary cholesterol, and trans fats. Well, the number one source of dietary cholesterol in our diet, by far, is, uh, is eggs, so the, the cholesterol and egg yolks. And so if we're trying to reduce uh, dietary cholesterol, that's the number one thing we get rid of. Uh, most of the work on nutritionfacts.org is just me reviewing other studies. Mm -hmm. It's not me doing studies. But actually, the eggs is one of the kind of rare exceptions where I actually did do a Freedom of Information Act request to get at American Egg Board documents because the American Egg Board is a function run by the U.S. government. So we, as citizens, have access to their internal emails. And so I have a series, about a half a dozen videos, you know, and, and hearing them talk back and forth. And they know about the cancer. And yet, you know, and they talk very openly about you know, the elephant in the room about cholesterol and how we can kind of distract people away from it. Um, and so using their own materials, you can see how, you know, these kind of tobacco industry-like tactics to confuse the American public about the harmfulness of eggs. Yeah, good point. And that's really what it comes down to is so much confusion out there. No wonder so many people are making choices that are not optimal for their health, especially where big money is concerned and the fancy ads telling us, oh, you need the, the dairy or the eggs, etc. And finally, how about meat products, especially the fact that today we have a movement that is leaning towards the paleo, the primal way of eating. And so while the dairy may go, for example, a lot of people think that, well, if at least I stay away from factory farmed animals, maybe if I go to the lean sources, that would be better. 
what's the problem there still? Oh, well, I mean, so it would be better. Animal products are the only source of dietary cholesterol. Made by the liver, plants don't have livers, so they don't have cholesterol. Um, number one source of saturated fat is dairy. The number two source is, you know, chicken. And, you know, the only natural source of trans fats on the planet are animal products as well. The, um, there was a study I profiled on the site um, uh, looking at uh, kind of wild caught meat. Like, this is done in Australia, so they're talking about kangaroo meat, kind of the venison of Australia. <laughs> Uh, but it compared that, the amount of inflammation caused by kangaroo meat compared to store-bought retail meats, and found that indeed that the kangaroo meat caused less of a spike in inflammation in a few hours after consuming than the retail meat. But I don't want less, in, I don't want food to just cause less inflammation, right? At the very least, I want food to cause no inflammation, or even better, have anti-inflammatory effects, and that's what plant foods do. I mean, the plant foods you know, lower CRP levels, and I mean, so yeah, better. But well, I mean, that, that's 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 not my kind of choice. And now look, if I'm on a so if I'm on a desert island, do I eat the can kangaroo or the? Okay, then we can have an academic discussion. But look, we have choices, and we can eat healthy food. We can eat less healthy food, you know, and so it's all along a spectrum. And look, any movement I think people make towards eating healthier, you know, it's like, I don't know, like a low-fat Twinkie or something, right? A low-fat Twinkie, would it be better? Sure. <laughs> but, you know, why, why eat a low-fat Twinkie when you can eat some, you know, wonderful veggie chili or something? Yeah, just not eat the Twinkie, right?